why do this when you can do this? New project coming out of Bob's Woodshop today. Stay tuned. Okay, got this new drill press and I'm going to do a little video today. This is the uh, Nova Viking drill press. <clears throat> got this for Christmas present to myself. Today's January 20th, 2024. It's 12 degrees here in New Jersey. But I ended up getting this Rockler drill press table. And the problem with it, it's going to hit here. So that's not good. Now I could just slide that out a little bit and then make this work. But uh, I want to do a little bit more elegant solution and have that come in here. So here's a little bit better look at the new drill press. Very cool technology. I'll be doing a review on this at a later date. I really wanted to address this first issue that I've got with the uh, hand crank, right? So let me get into that with you. So these are the main components that you need for the uh, for this project. Uh, by the way, I got this idea after searching the center of all knowledge and power of the universe by looking on YouTube. And there's a young man named Josh Isles who uh, gave me this idea. There's a lot of other ways to do this. Uh, I've seen many videos where people put a bevel gear on one side and then bring the hand crank out to the front of the table. But I like Josh's uh, solution better. <clears throat> so this is a motor that's available from uh, Amazon. Matter of fact, all these parts came from Amazon. And uh, so he, he did the research on this. He started that with a smaller motor, didn't work. Um, so then he uh, recommended this one. So that's what I'm gonna do also. Uh, by the way, all these parts are going to be linked in the description below. But uh, I think this one was uh, 75 bucks. Uh, next thing you need is a good toggle switch. And this is a double throw, double pull, momentary switch, which means it has three uh, positions. And actually, this is the first one I got. And like I said, I'm no electrician, and I saw this, and there's no... Uh, wiring diagram that comes with this and uh, I didn't really want to use this and besides this one was really just a double pull double throw this was just an on and off switch so I looked a little bit longer on Amazon and came up with this and this one this was already pre-wired and for the wiring of this basically these two uh, poles in the middle they go to your power and the uh, the ones on the ends, they they crisscross, so it goes from this side to this side. Yeah, you, this jumps from this side to this side. This is connected from here to here, and then these two, these two on the end, they go to the uh, motor. Now this is a a double pole, double throw switch where it has three positions. You've got one that you push to go this way up, but it's, it stays static in the middle off and then here. So you have to keep the pressure down on this. So I, I did pre-wire this and uh, it did work, but I, I took it apart so that I could do this uh, demonstration. Okay, another main component you need is an AC to DC adapter. This adapter has that type of connection. I forget what that's called right now. Uh, and I didn't want to cut this in order to take this this uh, male connector off. So these things are available also. This was a two-pack. It was a two-male, two-female, and this will fit in there, and then this is going to go to the switch in the motor uh, through, through the switch, okay? The other thing that you need is a coupler, and this is a commercial coupler. I think this was 10 or 12 bucks. Uh, this has a 3 8 inch hole on one side that will fit the motor. It does not have a keyway in it. So if you buy this, you have to cut a keyway in it. Um, and this is a 5 8 inch hole that goes onto the shaft of the drill press crank. Right. While I was waiting for this to come in, I decided to make my own since I got a lathe. And 
So this is, I don't know, it's about an inch and a half long. I got a five eighths inch hole on one side, a three eighths inch hole here, and I cut out a little keyway, which fits, which fits nicely now on this shaft. And it's got the, uh, the key right there. Uh, I believe this little, uh, that little key will pop off there if you want, but as long as it was there and it was going to put a lot of torque on here, I decided to keep it. And then uh, I drilled four holes um, for set screws, and uh, this should just work work just fine. So now what we got to do is figure out how we're going to wire this and hold this onto the drill press. Okay, so again, using my coupler, I would do this. And uh, so then you got to figure out a way, how the heck am I going to attach this so that this can move up and down along with this uh, so there's uh, i guess different types of brackets what i think i'm going to do is uh and this does have to be stabilized and i'm thinking i might just do something like this in order to clamp this down here let me give you a better view of that so i've got to do something like this and this this is about a half inch short and I don't want to fill that in with washers. But I think something like this would work okay. The motor is a little bit of an angle. Um, so I'm not liking that. So I'm going to come up with something else. So the uh, diameter of the motor is two and a half inches. So I'm going to come up with a custom bracket. Okay, let's use the old compass here. I'll design a little bracket. Oops. We'll drill that hole out and we're going to cut around like this and then have a little tab over here. Let's make that a little darker. Make that a little darker for the movie camera. And we'll do something like this. And then we can drill this and cut this out on the bandsaw. Oh, dusty and next time turning dust collector on I got it right here I left it off on purpose because of the uh, noise and so now we got to go over to the uh, bandsaw okay in order to get this to fit properly I sanded off a little bit of a bevel here um, so it'll fit better on the bottom of the drill press table. So all I gotta do now is drill a little hole in here and put a screw through there and mount that underneath the table. I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, once again, the two leads in the middle go to power. These are little tiny screws. Again, I'm not an electrician and I'm just showing you how I did it. Anything you do in your shop, you're responsible for. So if it doesn't work, don't blame me. If you electrocute yourself, not that it's gonna happen on 24 volts. Uh, that's on you. This project's on me. You know, with six, six leads, you guys gotta be careful you're doing the right thing. These two leads coming off the top are going to go to the to the motor and i think what i'm going to do is connect these initially for testing purposes i i used wire nuts as a matter of fact i think i'm going to do that also here on the final i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes um when i do the final wiring I'm going to use heat shrink tubing. All right, let me go plug this in. Okay, let's see if it works. Something's not, something's not working. Robo, the power cord to the AC adapter was loose. Look at this. 
Isn't that always the way? Just missing. So I'm going to put a little jumper cable in there. I could move the box over here, but I'd rather have it in the front. So let me go get another piece of wire. Oh, I can't believe it. I actually got some wire that'll work perfectly for this. It's even color-coded. I'm going to wire this up off camera. Well, I don't have a soldering iron, but I do have a heat gun. Get these wires. All right, so now just a matter of a little bit of cable management to uh, mount this in here somewhere or down here. Still got to figure that part out. Okay, when Josh did his, he 3D printed a couple brackets and this big cable clamp's just going to work nice and fine for me. It's in there nice and tight. I'll get another one and hold it on with two a little later on. That's the only one I have right now. Okay, so here's the final. I did a little cable management with some Gorilla Tape. And I got that in the bracket there. And the wire is coming out of the box there. And uh, this seems to be working pretty good. So we'll see how this uh, lasts for time. Might have to change this bracket, not sure. But uh, you know, for now, today, on a cold winter day, it's a great little project. The whole thing took about three hours. So this project was about maybe $130 for the motor and the switches and the parts. Uh, here's how well it's working. We might have to change out that bracket, but we'll see. Um, and here's a final shot of the new drill press, which I'll do a video on that at some future date. In the meantime, thanks very much for tuning in and catch you on the next one.